And we're continuing on with the sheet metal pods for my AC vents and my 66 F100 dash. This time we're working on the driver's side and going to get it ready to weld in. to making this again. I tried, I've already done a bit of pre-stretching. I don't think it stretched as much as it stretched last time, but oh well. So let's go start working it over. So we're starting to get what in sheet metal working terms is called a tuck. I'm bending over and this needs this area here needs to shrink to make this uh, bend over on over. I'm sure I'll show you in the last one of these that I made. Um, I had to work on my shrinker. I hope I got it fixed now. So let's give it another try and see if it works a little better. It was fighting me the other day. Uh, I'm not sure what's wrong with it. It was kind of doing this ever since I've had it brand new. So I don't even know. This, this is a Lancaster. It's a good one. It's made in America and all that good stuff. So I don't know why I was having trouble with it. The stretcher works jam up. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's see what we can do here. See if it'll stretch on me or not. I'm going to have to pie cut it. I'm going to have to pie cut it eventually anyway. But I'm trying not to have to do it just yet. This is going to be aggravating. The last one was a whole lot easier. I don't know why. Let me mention that whole beginner's luck thing. Could have been a lot of it. I want one of the kick, kick pedals for this thing so bad, but they're expensive. They're like a lot of expensive. One day I won't have to get one though. That may be about all I can do. I thought I stretched, stretched the other one more than this. Maybe I did. Maybe I'm just making remember. Alright, 
about as good as I'm going to be able to do it. I think that's about what I had before. So I'll put the stretch. The shrinker put a big bend in it right there, which I can take out with the pliers. So let me see if I can take this out with the pliers. These duck bills are pretty good for this kind of stuff. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just taking the duck bills, working out that bend a little bit. Basically, what I'm going to do here, got a bit of warp here. Take that warp out. That's better. Warp, not warp. I'm not talking starch right here. Well, warp. I guess we would be too. Warp speed. Anyway, little I still got a little bit of a, of a bend, wrinkle in it. So, as I was feared, the second version didn't come out as good as the first. But I am gonna cut most of that off. I got a lot of extra hangover, a lot of extra lip here, on purpose to get the shrinker on it. Now it's time to, I guess, to cut most of that off. But now that I've got my I've got my face established and my nice profile of my radius here. I'm Which is what I was after on my little jig here with die. I can go ahead and cut it off. But it's definitely going to need to be worked by hand just like the other one was. Alright, I'm going to I'm going to get this cut off and then we'll move on to the next steps. Started fitting. I forgot to cut the camera on again. So, uh, I'm kind of fitting it in, but not kind of, I am fitting it in, roughly, one thing I did notice on this side that I hadn't accounted for, the dash right here for the instrument panel goes, got a different shape because it kind of sticks in, so that's going to throw me off a little bit. I can deal with it. I'm pretty sure I can work around it, but it is making things a little different. Now, I'm also doing this. Last time I bent the bottom before I started shaping the top, but now that I kind of know what I'm doing, see, that got, that's getting that side in there better now. I'm going to go ahead and shape the top. Get it pretty close, um, which is what I'm doing now. I'm really just eyeballing this, just kind of knowing what it needs. Looking at it, there's nothing particularly scientific about how I'm doing this. I'm just eyeballing it, which is a lot of times it's the best way. Identical fit to the other side or identical look because the dash is in the way. Or the, yeah, this. But the, uh, the effect is still the same. 
It'll have the same basic idea, enough that you're gonna know that it was meant to be here. Alright, next to the thing, next to the, what am I, bat, uh, bottom turner overdrive? <laughs> sorry. Me and my bad references, I'm sorry. Not really, but I'm sorry, but not really. Um, next thing to do is bend it on this line right here. That's why I pre-marked it. I think I mentioned that. I marked these lines originally so I could keep everything square and straight before I ever started cutting anything out. And while I'm cutting, try to mark out. I already made a rough lock, rough, nim, 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 nim. rough mark for cutting the dash. I can get a better mark. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not going to cut completely on this line. Um, I cut part of it. I'm going to cut about right there to start with. If you hadn't already figured that out, I've got to make a new, a new uh, place, panel, insert, doodad, thingy, my job, whatever, for my ignition switch. I'm going to put my ignition switch over there somewhere. Got to fill these holes in and figure out where I'm going to do that. Because uh, obviously the ignition switch is not going to be able to be over here no more. No more. No, don't do that. I hate that song. All right, let's do some cutting. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna make my initial cuts with the cutoff wheel, finish it with the body saw. That thing just does such a good job on, you know, irregular shapes and curves and stuff. So, we'll start here first. trimming this edge a little bit more but if it flows into this curve right here then I ain't gonna sweat it it'll be all right maybe just a little bit now I'm to the point like I, like I said I'm gonna start do, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna overdo it if I ain't careful Y'all might be yelling at me about 10 snips, but I can use a grinder to get a nice straight line. I've been doing it for years, so. I realize you can't see me doing that, but I'm doing it. All right, that fits better. Uh, what I'm doing is just using the edge of the grinder like this. I mean, I'm finessing. I'm not taking off much material at all. 
How much? Not much. I'm just finessing it enough to get in here to fit like I like it. That's all I'm doing. Not anything heavy as far as removable. Removable? Removing material at all. Just light. really get in there nice. I'd almost stop. Time to bend the bottom. I think the last one I bent was I think it was 15 degrees or thereabouts. Um, Protractors here somewhere. This is not easy to get to guess at either, doing it like this. Yeah, somewhere around 30, but I hadn't got a gauge, so I had to I had to just eyeball it when I bend it and hope for the best. I got the, I bent the panel, put a little bit of extra roll in it, right here. I did it over on this side, where well, you can't see, but just lay it up there and roll it up under. I made a pattern off the other side when I, when I uh, formed the, the, the belly, the bowl, whatever you want to call it, so I just loosely used that same pattern. So here we are before we go into planishing hammer. Hoping to the metal shrinking gods that I don't screw this up. So let me get the camera set up and we're going to do that. Try to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. So as been before, I'm starting with the number, number one is the tightest one, biggest one. Smallest radius, tightest curve. So I'm going to start with that one first. Should have made my new adapter, but well, I'm here now. I'm not gonna do it. I was gonna make a new. I am gonna make a sleeve or something for this piston or the rod die raise it up into that lower die so it doesn't have a little gap in there that gap I think is what's causing a lot of my hammer marks could also be just you know the dies too I don't know but Here we go, let's give it a whirl, see what happens. Cross your fingers. By the way, it's a metal shaping guy. This is not just shrinking, this is stretching. Here we go. Oh, see that? About to do it wrong again on the wrong side. It was upside down, I knew it was upside down, but I couldn't figure out why. Because I have to shape the bowl from this side, not this side, because it'll be the wrong way. Because the bowl goes this way. Anywho, all right, let's see what happens.
may not be a high dollar Tyson hammer, and it's not, but it'll it'll darn sure stretch some metal. And I'm gonna, I got a bunch of excess here. I'm gonna cut it off right quick. Get it out of the way. It's kind of getting in the way of the stretch. The more the more you have to stretch, the harder it is. So I got rid of all this extra metal back here. just tweaking the way it fits. Man, I just learned something on this hammer. I was putting this thing up here and just letting it easily ride in the, in the jaws. There towards the end I started pressing down. 
and the penis got much, much better. So, let me uh, change the dial. Put the number two dial on it. See if we can clamp it out a little better now. Pretty sure is how I did the other one. And I'm gonna press, I'm gonna turn the, the speed down so it don't quit hot, hit quite so hard. And I'm gonna press down on this lower dial. So it's basically can't do this anymore. I've got it pressed down. Not perfect, but it is a better finish. Yeah, that is better. I'll show you just a second when I finish. Guys, put a little, little wrinkle in there, like, it's nothing horrible. Huh. That's this technique. Alright, here's the finish on this one. I'll try and show the other one in comparison. This one's still not perfect, but it don't have that chainmail beat up hammer form look to it. Nearly as bad as the other one did. The first one that I made. Uh, it's still a little funny, but I'm pretty sure I can work it out. Okay, I'm done air hammering, so uh, on to some more fitting. Okay, doing some more fitting. I'm uh, I cut off a bunch more of the excess on the back here. Just letting me fit it better. Just tweaking this back edge a little bit. Well, here's no 
a good place to sit right here on this damn edge. <sighs> Sorry, another outburst. Alright, so... Being this other side under, it's kind of wanting to fight me. And the more this metal I get cut off, I get up in here, the better it's going to fit. I'm just trying to. You know, go at it kind of easy. Yeah, it's a whole lot better. Up in that side right there. It's better. I ain't been this den some too. Fitting that flange down there on the bottom. Alright, we're close enough now. We are close. Let me finish trimming this bottom off. That other side, I don't remember how I did it. I got it to fit perfect. I don't remember how I did it. <laughs> I may have walked it from the inside, but this one I can't get to the inside because it's uh, got a brace in the way. Maybe I didn't do it that way, I don't remember. I'm just going to sneak up on it, I hope, not do too much. Trying not to overcut it. This is the second one I'm making, so I probably used up my beginner's luck on the first one. Alright, we still fit, so a little more. It's to the point now where I can cut this thing out. I can cut the dash now to the final mark. That's what a hammer again. Hold on a second. Just roll that bottom edge a little bit. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I just roll the bottom edge a little bit with a hammer. A curved face hammer. Yeah, that's, that's in there good. Okay. What I'm going to do now, or as soon as I quit messing with this flange, because I can't get it perfect. I 
All right. First thing I'm going to do, which I, number one, I'm about to quit. I got to go. I got to go somewhere tonight, so I'm going to cut this tomorrow when I get back out here. I'm going ahead and I'm going to go ahead and cut the dash out, the final mark to fit. And then uh, we'll get it to fit, final fitment, and hopefully tomorrow i get it welded in. Okay. But there we are so far. I mean, I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, there you are. There we are. I got to trim a little bit off the bottom down here. I'm going to take the die grinder. AA just do it pretty rough and clean it up a little bit. That'll help a little. That's really close. Okay. 
Okay, I think I can go with that. Okay, that's really that's really close. All right, I gotta adjust the shape just a little bit. A couple of spots. Just using these duckbill pliers to pull this lip out a little bit. Just sort of match the dash better. It's pretty subtle. It's not it's not anything major. And I may have to take the hammer and tap it back a little bit. Yeah, I overdid it. Um, hammer that I need not in here. That, that fits. That's, that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is get out and find my hammer that I need. Clean all this up and get it ready to weld. So I'll, I'll be back when I get some of that done. Okay, that's it for part two. In part three, we'll weld the driver's side in and continue on. So thanks for being here. Thanks for looking in. Hope you're enjoying what you're seeing. And as usual, subscribe, smash the notification bell, do all the things. And I will catch you on the flip side. Y'all come back now, you hear?